once you get started with Godot, it's not too long before you run into the process versus physics process dilemma. Uh, do you throw everything in process or do you throw everything into physics process? When should I use one and not the other? There's a lot of comments on the web. There's a lot of discussions. There's like, I don't know which ones. Well, today, find out which use cases you should use the process and which use cases you should use the physics process for. So stick around and let's find out that answer together. All right. So when trying to determine what is best, do not see these methods as black and white and this is the law. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. The process method. Uh, the delta being the time since the last frame completed. Uh, this one seems to be mostly confused with the physics process. In the process method, we should be using these to try to get any non-display or node manipulation. What I mean by this is when you're using the process method, its entire goal is to try to complete this work as fast as possible. Think about this in a like longer time frame that it actually works on. Like, let's say it's working on a bunch of data that it needs to process, whether it's generating a level, saving data, etc. It could take, let's just say it takes three seconds to generate a level, and then the next frame it tries to save your data and then the next frame, you're updating your character's inventory with different items in there. Each one of these has a different time to process. It could be quicker, it could be shorter. Process is just trying to run through and complete these as soon as possible. Now, if you read in the documentation, it says to not do anything that does any node manipulation, such as moving a character or translating a character, because you're trying to get that smooth movement or display. This is just not the method for trying to create smooth operations. For example, let's say you're trying to have a character move around on screen, and then what you do is you decide, you know, you just have them moving around. Generally, this is a low taxing operation, and it runs through completes and before the frame is completed. These blue bars uh, represent the end of that frame. Uh, now you're like, cool, I'm going to have him run around, he's going to be attacking a few things, but it's not, it's nothing too complex. And so you have him move around, you then have him attack, and the frame ends, and it's no big deal. So sometimes you'll be able to say, hey, I did this frame, I did this stuff in here, I don't see any problems, it's totally fine. The problem occurs when you start adding too much logic, and the frames just can't keep up with what you're wanting to do. So in this case, you have him moving around, you then also have him attacking, and then you're like, oh, I'm going to add like 50 crabs that are running around in the same moment, and now it can no longer keep up. The display calculation goes further than the frame can handle, and then it starts skipping frames and your FPS just drops, or at least it gives that appearance that your uh, display is lagging uh, in, in the mobile world, it's called jank. Uh, you're, you're skipping frames, you're not actually allowing it to complete because not enough time is given to actually complete that. Uh, or it just takes so long that the, the frames from each side just are not enough to give that smooth appearance. Let's compare that to the physics process. So when you want to do something that is exactly timed from frame to frame, such as display or some kind of counter or some kind of way to show that it is exactly on time, or at least smooth from the last frame to this frame. Uh, you want to keep that kind of consistency. It's recommended to use the physics process. In this case, uh, it's set as a default of 60 frames per second. We get roughly each frame is 0 0.0166 or so, uh, but that could change, but it's, it's generally the frame rate that is set. Uh, and you can set it manually too, which I really don't recommend doing or messing with that unless you know what you're doing. Now the physics process is actually really cool in what it does. You notice here I've now got these operations stacked. This is the same setup we just did for the process. And instead of them happening sequentially, just did for the process, let's just say we start up and you have your character moving around, it's no big deal. That experience is now exactly the same as it is in process. 
So you might be saying, eh, hey, look, there's no, there's no difference. Let's say you start adding more complex items inside your uh, physics process. Now, simulations are actually handled in, in multiple threads if it get, if it needs more processing power. They make a comment in here and it's really quickly referenced, but I don't think it's understood by everyone what that means. Uh, what it's trying to do is split out the operations into multiple different worker jobs to get them done at the same time. Uh, they may might take a little longer. It might be, uh, you know, not the same length, but by stacking them in parallel, we could try to take uh, get ahead of the frame and be able to stack more operations and try to get them completed. So in this case, this is where the operation happens at the same time, and then it's completed. It's done in that same time frame, allowing for many, many more operations to happen in parallel and be calculated and be done as expected and allowing for uh, less chances for a frame to be skipped or, in that, or even create any of that lag. This is just as true as you had that last operation where it goes through and adds all of them and does them in parallel. This is exactly why you want to you make sure you're doing all this inside the physics process because all of these simulations that does anything with physics happen automatically. If you're manipulating an object, if you're doing anything uh, with physics simulations, this is gonna be split out in the same threads like this. Your standard processing frame may not be able to get the accurate value when it's done, and therefore that's that miss that we just saw that was red. Anything that's doing physics calculations is gonna be part of this uh, multi-threaded uh, parallel job. When this is happening, the, the process method has no idea. And so by the time it's done in the process method, it may be too fast for the physics operation to be completed. And therefore you get these unexpected results on your screen, which are really, really hard to figure out. In this case, they can be done in here and your everything is better. You can still overload by doing poor logic or not understanding how much time your operation takes, you could therefore still cause those frame skips. So it's still smart to be aware of how long and uh, how complex your operation is in whether it's process or physics process. Lastly, let's talk about unhandled input, which is a surprise. Why am I talking about unhandled the unhandled input method? I thought this was just process and physics process. Let me tell you to do your best to not put input checks in either your process or your physics process if possible. These methods, process and physics process, are continually being called. The process method is trying to get to the next frame as soon as possible. The physics process is happening, you know, every frame being 0 0.01666 seconds. Now imagine pulling and tapping your keyboard 0. 0166 seconds for every single second, you know, and to start determine if you really need to say if that needs to be done. Think of it like when you continually look at your phone and you're like, hey, did someone call me? Even though you just checked, you know no one called you, but you're still checking to see if someone called you and you're doing that over and over and over again. The smarter move, the unhandled input method, it only checks if it happens. You get a phone call, you get a notification, there's some kind of way to tell you that something is happening. Unhandled input is very similar. It only gets called when an input event occurs. Now, like I said, these are guidelines. Your entire mechanic might be around movement and motion and where you are constantly pushing buttons to keep things down, where you constantly need to know something about the events that are occurring. Maybe you need to hold the button down to know that it's uh, refilling a canister or you're moving around it and it's just you are constantly pushing those buttons that you feel like any miss that you do not check in those seconds, it, it could be a miss in input. Fine, put it in there, but just know that you're constantly checking the input queue. If you're just putting an event to say, hey, open my inventory, then it's not worth doing. That should be done in the unhandled input method. So understanding where these go. So to recap, process is to be used for non-display, non-timing based operations writing something to a cache, saving your game, doing anything that requires you to not have to worry about a display operation. Physics process, things that are timed, need to be kept in line with a certain sync, uh, 
Display, movement, translating, manipulating nodes that show up on screen. Scale, movement, move and slide, move and collide. All those kinds of things should be done in the physics process. And lastly, try your best to use unhandled input for all your keyboard and mouse and input needs. And there we go. I hope that helped you understand these process methods. Uh, feel free to add a comment if you have more questions or general feedback. Uh, if this video was helpful, hit that like button so others can find it. And if it's not too much more to ask, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe. Stay awesome.